All right, we're back on our Massey. As you can see, there's a there's a hole in the tractor there. Previous videos, we figured out what happened, disassembled the engine, built the short block, built the cylinder head. We're gonna finish building the engine um, in this video, and then the next video, we'll put it back in the tractor. Here we go. Cat won't leave me alone. Let's see if she, you wanna be a part of this video, Kenny? You wanna be a part of this video? Okay. Okay, so there's a lot of parts to this engine and people often ask me, it's like, Rich, how do you remember where everything goes? Well, truth is I have a photographic memory. So uh, the smartest guy I ever knew uh, told me once, I forget what his name was. Um, he told me something, I forget. Anyway, um, truth is, if you're done listening to that line of BS, uh, really it only goes back together in one place. So knowing that that box is everything that it took to take the engine out of the frame, this is everything to do with the front cover. Now uh, I throw it all in a box and then uh, when I go to put everything back together again, I basically just lay it out. I've got five of these bolts and then a bunch of these bolts. These have paint on the outside. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that means that they're on the outside. There's a lot of them, so I figure those are probably the oil pan bolts. Uh, there's 10 of these and they don't have paint on them. So though I imagine that those would be on the inside of the timing cover somewhere. I have no idea where these ones go, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. These are an Allen, these are a Phillips, and these are most likely outside the engine. So when you are uh, taking stuff apart and you're worried about it, you can take the time to label each one in a Ziploc bag. It also helps to put bolts back together again um, in what you took it apart. So just lay the flywheel bolts on that. Um, the water pump, just put the water pump bolts back in the holes there. Um, these two are missing, I don't know why, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. There might be a bracket or something that goes over top, like the alternator, and that's why those are missing. Um, the bolts for the fan are laying in the fan. Things like that really help it out. Generally, unless you're working on a Ford product who likes to do multiple plugs that are the same for like sensors and that, manufacturer generally easy enough on you that it only goes back together in one spot. It also helps that uh, we have technology like video cameras and cameras and, and phones that are able to do stuff. So as you're taking stuff apart, take a picture of it. When you forget how something goes because you did it six months ago or a year ago or somebody else did it, like our GTO, I have no idea how the whole dash that thing went to. Anyway, it's a different story. Um, you can go back to that footage and that'll really help you out. So um, these are my timing cover bolts. So we'll put that on and then go from there. These will torque to 18 foot pounds. Couldn't find the actual torque on, in the manual, but 18 seems pretty reasonable for a 516 fine thread bolt. Okay, this is our front little mount plate that houses the thermostat. Um, we're gonna put a little bit of uh, gasket tack on this gasket and we'll torque this to the front of the head. Now is a great time to replace your thermostat. So we got a nice brand new thermostat. Hopefully that's the right one. Look at that, it's the right one. Uh, this little thing is just to get a little bit of coolant by the bypass until it opens up. We got our gooped up little gasket here. Does that work? It does work, look at that. Okay, the timing gear set in the front is very simple when you can see it all and very complicated if you're just doing an injection pump and I'll explain why. Um, right now you can see that these marks are not lined up with my crankshaft and my camshaft but right now my camshaft is timed to my crank. Um, there are two marks on your camshaft, there are two dots on your crankshaft and then there's also uh, one mark on your injection pump. Now this gear will only line up every, say, randomly 250 revolutions because it doesn't have the same amount of teeth. So um, we can pull this right off and spin this. Let's see if I can do it with one hand there. Okay, you see now my timing mark lines up and my timing mark lines up. There it is. And then the two is right there. So. Now I can put my injection pump on and know that I can line it up with that. If you were to take your injection pump off and not uh, have the rest of the cover off because you had an injection pump issue, if you turn this engine over, you're screwed because um, you could rotate this 
one full revolution and line up those marks again and your tractor won't start. There is tools to check the injector pressure to see when it's firing. Make that relative to when like your rockers are starting to move or do your camshaft. But don't move, don't rotate the engine if you remove your injection pump. Now the injection pump can only fit on that gear in one spot because it's slotted. So if you don't move it, you just line up those, those marks again, no problem. But um, big headache if uh, somebody turns it over when you're not there. So remove your starter, remove, jam something in there, take the key, take the battery, um, do whatever you have to do to make sure that this does not turn over. So we'll throw our injection pump on, we'll tighten these bolts. Uh, that's a lube hole, hole and has to line up with the lube on the block, but uh, these three holes will only go in in one spot. So here we go. And this nut for the camshaft gets torqued to 50 foot pounds. We'll run lots of lube around it afterwards. I just don't want to mess with what I'm working right now. Now you can see I made a line here. Uh, you can clock this pump. So it'll, it'll rotate this much and change your timing. If it doesn't have a mark when you start, make sure you add your own mark and uh, put it back to where you found it. Now, I've had uh, some weird stuff happen with rebuilds. Uh, an engine so sloppy that they actually moved the tooth, uh, like a full tooth on the injection pump. So no matter where I put the, th the, the pump, I couldn't get it to run right because it was so worn out. I don't know whether they, I forget whether they advanced or retarded the timing, but uh, start start where you left off and then go from there. There's a little roll pin that sits in this groove. Should be right about here. The injection pump turns over pretty easy, so you should be able to line that up. Maybe do it with the bolts. There go. That's a nice sound, and these bolts get torqued to 20 foot pounds. All right, flip the engine over and we are going to get into the oil pump, the balancer, the oil pan before we put this front cover on so we can line up all of our marks. Here we go. Okay, so this is our oil pump and balancer assembly. We need balancer on this one because uh, unlike this crankshaft out of a 5.9, there's no weights opposite the throw. So these would counteract each other. Uh, piston up, these are down, um, these are up, piston is down. Um, so what we use instead, what Massey decided to use is these little weights. If you see them coming around here, uh, they're like a half moon weight and they would uh, counteract the pistons and try to smooth out the vibration. Um, it's timed with a hole on the other side. We'll show you when we install it um, with piston number one and number four at top dead center. We need these weights laying down and they, they almost go in their own position. And then when you look inside, you can see that they just need to line up. See how they're kind of lined up there? As long as they're flat, I'm trying to find the light. As long as they're flat, you're good to go. If there's any doubt, move it one tooth and bolt it back up again. And you'll notice that they're, they're crooked and uh, not working. We cleaned it out way back, made sure there was no chunks in there. And even though there were no chunks in there, we cleaned the oil pan out or the oil pump out. So we're good to go on. There's no scoring or anything inside. Unfortunately, we lost some footage, um, but uh, that's the way it goes. Make sure that the dowels are in there. One is in here, the other one's in the block, and it's uh, six bolts that get the torque to 40 foot pounds. So here we go. This gear here, the weight needs to be halfway through the hole. What we can do just to be sure is, is uh, lay it on there and just lift up and move it to it. And just verify that, no, I can't see it at all. So let's go the other way. The other way, two teeth. No, that's not covering the hole. We'll go back. One more tooth. 
That's the correct tooth, and we're halfway in the hole again. We can torque these to 40 foot pounds, and we're golden. Okay, we've got our oil pan gasket laid out. It's in two pieces, three pieces, a little puzzle piece that goes on the side. I rebuilt the 4955, I think it was, and my service manager came along, he's like, you don't need those, throws them away. And if it's a wet clutch, then it has the chance to kind of get in there and it actually did leak at the back. So I don't think that's pertinent to this one, but we're gonna put them in anyway. I'll hit this with some gasket tack. We'll put a little bit of silicone right on the corners there and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're gonna put our front cover on and we've got our gasket kit. Uh, Rummage through and found the right gasket. Now when you get your kit, you'll get a whole bunch of extra gas gaskets that you have no idea where they go. And that's because this one kit does multiple different engines. But the nice thing is you'll, you'll have extra gaskets that you can put on a shelf and never use because you only get one front main seal, one rear main seal, one oil pan gasket, and one valve cover gasket because those are all the same. And then you have a bunch of gaskets that you will never ever use and it'll be fantastic. But we're gonna put our, this gasket on the back of the timing cover which is all nice and clean and scraped off and washed um, and then go from there. When I put the, 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 these paper gaskets on, I like to use this uh, high-tech spray gasket. It just puts a little film on it, makes it sticky. Really uh, fills any imperfections if you had like a little chisel mark or um, 30, 40 years of Canadian weather, just does a little bit of imperfections in the castings or whatever else. I've, I've had really good luck with this stuff. So um, when you have this gasket, once you put it on, you'll notice there's a little bit sticking out if you can see that, um, that's normal. So you can take a razor and just uh, cut the extra off once it's bolted to the engine itself. When you put your oil pan gasket on, make sure that you just put a little bit of silicone, not the spray gasket, but we go to a silicone that goes on underneath there. So when we punch these out, um, just put that spray gasket on, figure out which bolts go back. Um, I think they're in there. And then we'll bolt that up, so here we go. Timing cover is pretty straightforward. Put a couple bolts in, but finger tight, and then put your front pulley in because there's no dowels to center the timing cover. So putting your pulley in actually centers the main seal around it. And once that's in place, then you can tighten these down to 20 foot pounds. Okay, our water pump should spin a little nicer than that. So we got a new one. You can get rebuild kits. Probably about half the cost of a new water pump, but it was like 80 bucks. Buzz that center nut out, that's a one inch little puller with a couple bolts from the timing cover. Wonderful. I can't even turn that. We'll clean that up and bolt this one done, almost, look, I'm almost done.
So that's it on our little Perkins here for now. Hopefully that answers some questions about the balancer or whatever else. Next video, we'll be putting it back in the tractor. We'll be putting uh, as much of a load on it as we can. Seat those rings, we'll retorque the head, and then button her up and give it back. Uh, I got the rad all cleaned, a couple new rad hoses, um, some other stuff. Uh, yeah, stick around. Here we go.